Hello friends, now we will start with the next topic of power amplifiers that is distortion in the amplifiers. So first we will talk about the different types of distortions observed in the amplifiers and then we will concentrate on the distortion factor which is introduced in case of power amplifiers. Distortion in power amplifiers is one of the important parameters because in case of power amplifiers we deal with the large signals and when there is large variation in the signals there is no linearity in the output characteristics of BJT which introduces the harmonics in the output. We will see the basic region of introduction of harmonics in the output of the amplifier. So let us talk about the different types of distortion observed in the power amplifiers first. So first let us start with the first distortion that is called nonlinear distortion. The nonlinear distortion in power amplifiers is introduced because of the non-linearity in the output characteristics of the BJT. That means in case of BJT, the output current which is considered to be collector current with the ammeter as the common terminal, the output current is not linear function of input if there is large variation in the input signal right because of that we have we don't have the output signal which is the linear function of input so under such situation we have a distortion which is known as the nonlinear distortion the nonlinear distortion is sometimes called the amplitude distortion so this is also known as your nonlinear distortion is also known as what? This is also known as amplitude, that is amplitude distortion, right? So remember this. This is the alternative name of this distortion. So let us see the bullet points which are important for understanding. So when output characteristics of BJT are nonlinear these unequal variation of output for equal variation of input signal there is uh, there is not this there is unequal variation in output for equal variations in input what is the meaning let us understand that what we have we have the output characteristic of bjt where your collector current your these this these are the lines which are basically representing what the base current so this is ib0 this is ib1 this is ib2 and we have ib3 this is the voltage this is ib3 this is voltage what vce right this is collector current fine so suppose this is one micro ampere this is 2 micro ampere, this is 3 micro ampere, this is 4 micro ampere, right? So we have equal variations in the base current. What is that variation? What is the change? 1 micro ampere is the change 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So the corresponding current here, collector currents are like this. Say this is 1 milliampere, this is 2 milliampere. But the change of 4 milliampere here it may be 4 milliampere, here it may be 8 milliampere like this. So, what is the change here from here to here? Change in base current is 1 microampere, but change in current is 1 milliampere. From, from here to here, change in current base current is again 1 microampere, but change in uh, collector current is 2 milliampere. From here to here, change in base current is 1 microampere. From, from here to here, what is the change in ammeter uh, collector current? 4 by milliamperes. So, when for equal variations in the base current, there is unequal variations in the collector current. So, your collector current is not a linear function of the base current. Under such situation, you are, when your collector current is not varying linearly with base current, so your collector current will not be sinusoidal for sinusoidal base current. So that means if input current is sinusoidal 
output current is not sinusoidal that leads, leads to distortion in the signal at the output and that distortion is called amplitude or nonlinear distortion so the when output characteristics of bjt are nonlinear there is unequal variation in output for equal variation in the input so this is when there is a variation like this so that characteristic is nonlinear it is not linear fine so that is the meaning of it right so if you understand this so let us proceed further now let us see the next bullet point i will just remove it this is there this is there is that is there is unequal variation fine so next bullet point under such situation when when your output current is varying linearly with the input under such situations output signal has additional harmonics introduced due to non-linearity in the characteristic such distortion is called non-linear distortion i have already explained that right what is the meaning of additional harmonics meaning is for one frequency in the input i will be having multiple frequencies in the output signal that is in the collector signal so we will see how those additional frequencies are introduced when we go for mathematical analysis so nonlinear distortion is also called amplitude distortion second type of distortion is called frequency distortion what is the meaning of frequency distortion uh, this distortion is introduced in the output signal when when magnitude of transfer function is function of frequency what is the meaning of that let us try to understand suppose we have gain of amplifier like this this is gain of the amplifier say this is gain of amplifier which is function of frequency and that is like this some dc gain plus one plus maybe i may be having f by f naught right like this right so I have what I have some frequency component so uh, when we have the transfer function as function of frequency or we can say when gain of the amplifier is function of frequency under that situation your gain is varying with frequency so what is gain gain is i can say it is current gain so gain is output current by input current base current so that is function of frequency so that means if you take collector current you can take base you can take current i on this side so that will be collector current so collector current will be varying with frequency so if you change frequency collector current is varying means amplitude will of the collector current will be varying so if amplitude of collector current varies this is magnitude so if magnitude or amplitude of collector current varies with frequency in that case rather than uh, in that case the distortion introduced is called frequency distortion right so the frequency distortion is introduced because of the dependence of gain of the amplifier on frequency of the input signal how it happens it is the frequency distortion is basically introduced because of the coupling capacitors what is the reason the frequency distortion is introduced because of the coupling or bypass capacitors fine so that is the major region which is responsible for variation in gain of variation in amplitude or gain of the amplifier as a function of frequency right so frequency distortion puts limit on the range of the frequency of input signal why because when you go on in changing or the frequency of the input signal my output will be changing so if you go on increasing the frequency your output will change 
and that puts a limit on the frequency why because here in this case when you go on increasing frequency amplitude will uh, gain amplitude, amplitude your magnitude of the gain will decrease so because of that there is a constraint in the amplifier so that is the frequency distortion which is introduced because of the frequency dependence of gain of the amplifier so frequency distortion occurs when gain or all transfer function of amplifier is function of frequency under such condition different frequency components of input signal are amplified with different amplification factor so input signal has say one frequency output signal has an, uh, then it has different frequency so if input signal is having multiple frequencies so different in, input frequencies will be amplified with different gain and accordingly output will be different so that is the distortion at the output which is because of the different frequency components in the input which are amplified with the different gain right so frequency distortion put limits on the range of frequencies at the input signal to be amplified frequency distortion occurs in amplifier due to what capacitive components like coupling capacitors and bypass capacitor of the external circuit or parasitic capacitances of the BZT or device so these are the major uh, parameters which are responsible for frequency dependence of the gain of the amplifier right then we have third type of distortion that is phase distortion how does this phase distortion comes into picture we know if the gain of the amplifier is function of frequency then phase of the output will be function of frequency automatically remember if gain is function of frequency the phase of the uh, signal at output will be automatically function of frequency in most of the cases except your all pass right so or, or rather than saying all pass except few cases i can say so but here when my phase uh, suppose i have gain of the amplifier let us see that suppose i have an amplifier whose gain is like this af equal to some dc gain divided by one plus f by f c j like this so if you see that this phase of this so that will be minus tangent inverse f by f c i hope you know so you can take phase of this so this is what i not have or collector current that is icf by i input so phase of collector current in that case will be phase this is the phase of the gain plus phase of the input current this is input current i v or i in of this so it means here gain your uh, phase is function of phase of gain is function of frequency so this will vary with the frequency this will vary with the frequency and the phase of the output will vary with the frequency even if this is having constant phase angle so phase angle of output varies with the change in frequency of the input signal that type of distortion is called phase distortion right so you can see uh, phase distortion phase distortion occurs when phase of the transfer function transfer or uh, transfer function or gain of the amplifier is function of frequency that's what i'm trying to say so i just know this so my phase is function of frequency in this case so that leads to a distortion that is called phase distortion right so when phase of the transfer function or gain of the amplifier is function of frequency different frequency components of input signal have different phase shift resulting in phase shift distortion or phase distortion so that finishes your different types of distortion what are the different types amplitude distortion frequency distortion and phase distortion and we have seen the different uh, uh, regions of these distortions now let us see the harmonic distortion in amplifiers what is the meaning of harmonic distortion i have a sinusoidal input but we will see what will be the output right 
So we will consider this characteristic which is assuming, assumed to be nonlinear. What is the meaning of nonlinear? For equal variations in the input current, your output current is not varying equally, right? In that case, we can represent this collector current as function of the base current. What is the meaning? If my collector current is not linear function, I have, suppose I now, or now I assume, I see as what? I see is function of base current IC equal to B1 IB, B2 IB, B3 IB cube and so on. B, B2 IB E square, B3 IB cube and so on. I am assuming this is my assumption. So let the collector current is nonlinear function of base current where I have the different terms of the base current, right? It is a nonlinear variation of the collector current with base current. That is my assumption. But we neglect terms about this B3 output just for simplification why because when you go on increasing the power these coefficients b3 b4 will go on decreasing fine that is just an assumption so i will assume the collector current is what approximately equal to b1 ib that is b1 b1 ib plus b2 ib square that is my assumption right so, if your base current is sinusoidal, I assume let I be equal to what? I am sin omega t. If you put this here in this equation, so collector current will be what? B1, I am sin omega t plus B2, I am sin omega t whole square, right? So this can be written like this, IC equal to B1 I am sin omega t plus B2 plus B2 I am, this is B2 I am into sin square omega t, if you remember sin square omega t is equal to what, 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 that is the expression so i can write ic equal to what that is b1 i am sin omega t plus b2 i am by 2 minus b2 i am by 2 into cos 2 omega t. So what do we have? We have a term which is independent of frequency. We have a term which is single, which is having single frequency and we have a term which has double frequency. So I can say IC equal to what? I naught plus I1 sin omega t or plus what? I2 cos 2 omega t right where i naught is what i naught is dc component in the collector current which is equal to what this is dc component b2 i am by 2 what is i2 what is i1 i1 is b1 into i am what is i2 i2 is nothing but b2 i am by to. this is what you have what i mean to say is please understand when input current was single frequency or when input current was having single frequency my collector current has dc component the same frequency as the input and double the frequency of the input provided i have up to this square term so that means I have frequencies which are multiple of the input frequency when your characteristics are nonlinear. So when we have when we have frequency which are multiple of the input frequency, those are called harmonics. What are harmonics? 
the integral multiple of the input frequencies are nothing but harmonics of the input right so we have different harmonics at the output when we have single frequency at the input so this is nothing but that leads, leads to a distortion which is known as harmonic distortion we will see that one by one so uh, uh, i'll just skip it quickly so uh, these terms i'm just writing right i can remove that but in fact whatever you have done that is repetition of that right so uh, you, you can remove it i can erase the complete part whatever you have written that was just for your understanding right so here whatever you did is just for your understanding otherwise everything is there which is of course in typed form this is already already there on the slide that was discussed just to make you understand fine so let us see let us see all the terms one by one whatever you discussed i'll be discussing those terms one by one here so neglecting higher term i have only up to this second term right up to square right i have considered this to be sinusoidal so this is the so when you put ib here in this equation you have that expression that i have already explained this i have already explained this i have already explained to you right so so the distortion what is the distortion factor the distortion factor is basically the ratio of the amplitude of harmonics with the fundamental so in previous case when we had you, you, you try to understand please in previous case what do we have what do you have we had we had ic equal to i naught plus i1 sin omega t plus i2 cos 2 omega t this is what we had in the previous case right so the ratio what is the harmonic distortion the harmonic distortion is the ratio of different harmonics with the fundamental this is called second harmonic distortion this is called second harmonic distortion or distortion factor you can say right second harmonic distortion factor right similarly i have d3 equal to i3 by i1 why d3 because i i, I have considered mathematical analysis of two square of the base current if you have multiple powers of the base current i will be having multiple frequencies the frequency of the output same as input is fundamental frequency the frequency which is second time of the input frequency is called second harmonics the frequency which is three times of the input frequency is called third harmonics the frequency which is four times of the input signal is called fourth fourth harmonic and their corresponding uh, amplitudes are amplitude of second harmonic amplitude of third harmonic amplitude of fourth harmonic and so on so the this is called distortion factor due to what that is due to second harmonic right i'll say uh, d2 not d d2 is i2 by i1 d3 is i3 by i1 d4 is i4 by i1 and dn is this is d4 dn is i n by i1 right so this is how we can write the different distortion factors or distortion factors due to different harmony right so let us see that whatever you discuss for hanath harmonics right for hanath harmonic it is called i n by i1 right otherwise i have explained completely here right so i'll be just skipping it because we have already discussed now let us talk about total harmonic distortion so when you have interestingly here when you have multiple terms say your collector current is having multiple terms maybe it will, it will be having i3 uh, sine 3 omega t and so on right so in that case the total harmonic current when you have multiple harmonics the total harmonic current is nothing but that is the 
under root of the squares of the different harmonics like this i1 square and we are talking about harmonic so i will be taking second harmonic onward i will be taking second harmonic onward why because this is called fundamental so this is not harmonic this is fundamental harmonic but this is second harmonic and so on so if you talk about total harmonic what is that i will be taking different components of the base current so harmonic current beyond fundamental is i h equal to what is that that is i2 square plus i3 square plus i4 square and so on under root this is the mathematical expression when you have a current which is having multiple frequencies so what is the total current square of the different amplitudes under root sum of the squares of the different amplitude under root that becomes a total current I am neglecting the because this and this this term these two terms because I am finding the amplitude of harmonics amplitude of harmonics means from the term which is having twice the frequency of the input this term onward right so this is nothing but total amplitude of the different harmonics so when you say we have a term called total harmonic distortion we have a, we have a term which is called total harmonic distortion that is the ratio of total harmonic current divided by fundamental so this is equal to what this is i2 square plus i3 square plus so on then i n square under root divided by i1 you can take i1 in, inside the root so total harmonic dissociation will be what that is denoted by thd so this will be i2 square by i1 square under root i'm taking i1 in and a root plus i3 square by i1 square and so on what is i2 by i1 second that is second harmonic distortion factor what is i3 by i1 third harmonic distortion factor and so on so you can write the total harmonic distortion like this thd is equal to d2 square plus d3 square and so on plus dn square under root that is your total harmonic distortion introduced by an amplifier right so whatever you discussed you can just uh, go for the mathematical uh, you, you can see everything is there with you that is of course in type form but this was to explain what are the different distortion factor here right so let us see the dif dif different distortion factors which are already there given in type form in the slide right so let us see that so to harmonic for nth harmonic that is the ratio of uh, amplitude of nth harmonic by fundamental total harmonic distortion is what total harmonic distortion is defined as the ratio of amplitude of total harmonics i have shown and fundamental component of the current mathematically of course that is total harmonic current by fundamental current and total harmonic component is given by this this is i have already explained right so uh, uh, total harmonic distortion will be total harmonic component divided by fundamental so you take this inside the root and you have d2 square plus d3 square and so on so that is your distortion to introduced in the amplifier fine now total ac power output what is total ac power output my output signal has different terms a DC component, fundamental, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic and so on. So when you talk about AC power in the output, so we will find the power because of the AC terms, AC components of the output current. What are those AC components of the output current? Power due to fundamental, power due to second harmonic and so on. So in power we take RMS value of the current. So total power will be 
power because of the fundamental which is nothing but RMS value of the fundamental current square of that into RL. RL is load resistance. Then second, power, second harmonic current square of that into RL and so on. Right. So now this is nothing but power because of the fundamental. This is the power because of the fundamental current. This is these are nothing but power because of the harmonics right so p can be written like this i1 rms square into rl can be taken outside and this is i2 rms uh, rather than writing rms again and i will be simply writing like this right and so plus i3 square by i1 square right and so and you know what is that it is nothing but what this is second harmonic distortion this is third harmonic distortion and so on so i can write power in terms of the harmonic distortions whatever you discuss so we will see this was just to explain so we will see how to find the power because of the in terms of distortion factor let us see that so what do we do we take this as the common right so uh, I skip to this one there when you take this as common so there has to be one also so these are nothing but distortion factors so I have written distortion factors here this is power because of the fundamental p1 is power because of the fundamental so you can replace all these what that is thd root of this is thd so it will be simply d square why because of root, under root of square of this is what thd so this will be p1 plus thd square or d square right so that is your overall what that is your overall power in the output signal so power in the output signal is what the fundamental power plus power due to different harmonics and power due to different harmonics is nothing but d square into power of the fundamental so uh, uh, this this is just for understanding point of view but there can be questions in objective type paper of engineering services exam from this so from that angle it is important right let us see the example this was the question in engineering services in lab paper a sinusoidal signal of 100 hertz is applied to the amplifier the output current is this the output current has what was the frequency 100 hertz here output current is this so what is the approximate percentage increase in the power due to distortion right so you have to find the percentage increase in the power so output current please see output current is what i'll see. let us see that output current is i naught i naught is 20 sine right 2 pi into 100 t 2 pi into 100 is this frequency 2 into pi is 6.28 multiplied by 100 so this is this frequency plus 2 sine 2 pi into 200 t plus 1 sine this is double of this right so that means four times so two sine two pi into four hundred t why this is four times this frequency right so it means i have fundamental uh, that is the frequency of the input signal right so i have fundamental i have second harmonic i have fourth harmonic why because my frequency at the output is four times frequency at the output is two times so i have second harmonic and right fourth harmonic right so what is the power because of the input signal right power because of the what is overall distortion factor distortion factor overall distortion factor will be what that is i2 this is i1 this is i2 this is i4 this is i2 this is i1 right so d is nothing but d2 is nothing but i2 by i1 
So that is what? 2 by 20. That is 1 by 10. Right? What is D4? D4 is I4 by I1. That is 1 by 20. Right? Fine. So what will be overall distortion factor? Overall distortion factor D is D2 square plus D4 square under root. So this is 1 by 10 square plus 1 by 20 square under root. So that is your distortion factor. So overall power at the output is what? Overall power at the output will be that is P equal to power of the fundamental into 1 plus D square. That is the expression we have just seen in my mathematical analysis, right? So this is D square, right? So now you have to find the approximate percentage in increase in the power. So approximate percentage in increase in the power will be what? From here, that will be P minus P1, right? Divided by P1. That will be the percentage increase. Why? Because this is the percent increase in power divided by fundamental power. That is the percentage increase. And that is equal to D square. And D square is what? Please see here. D square. D square is nothing but 1 by 10 whole square plus 1 by 20 whole square. Right? So you can find the value from this. You can of course you can simplify like this. You can make it 20. You can make it 2. So here it will be 1, 1 by 400 because 20 square is 400 into what? 5. This will be 4. This will be 1. So into 5. 5 by 400. Right? So that is and when you talk in percentage so that has to be multiplied by 100. So it has to be multiplied by 100 here. It has to be multiplied by 100 overall. It has to be multiplied by 100. It has to be multiplied by 100. So this is 1.25%. What is 1.25? This is your answer and this is your answer. 1.25% is the percentage increase in power because of what? These two additional harmonics. This is what I discussed and that was the question which appeared in engineering services. I hope you understood that. Right. So now let us see another example that was in engineering services ENT. The output signal of power amplifier has amplitude of what? 2.5 volt. That is fundamental. 0.25 volt. Second harmonic. 0.1 volt. Third harmonic. So total percentage harmonic distortion in the amplifier is. You know what is the total harmonic distortion? First, D2 will be what? I2 by I1. What is I2? 0.25. What is I1? 2.5. So that is what? 1 by 10. Right? That is 1 by 10. Fine. What is the third harmonic? Third harmonic is I3 upon I1. That is 0 0.1 by what? 2.5. That is 1 by 25. Right? Total harmonic percentage harmonic distortion. Total harmonic distortion is what? Total harmonic distortion is given by D2 square plus D3 square under root. Right? And if you talk about percentage, you multiply it by 100. Percentage harmonic distortion. So, uh, let us calculate THD first. So, that is 1 by 100 square plus 1 by 25 square under root and you multiply that to the that particular factor by 100 so that will be your you can calculate that that comes out to be approximately 10.8 right so this you can well, you by using calculator you can verify that or you, you just see this is what 0 0.1 square or we can say what this will be what 0 0.1 whole square plus 0 0.4 whole square 0 0.04 rather uh, that is 0 0.4 and this is 
Yes. Um, but, uh, divided by 25. So that is uh, 0 0.04 and this is 0 0.1 square under root. So you can calculate that. So you will be uh, and, and in percentage what do we do? In percentage when you have in percentage so you multiply it by what? 100 and when you multiply it by 100 you will get this value. Right? So that is how we calculate the percentage harmonic distortion. And that finishes your distortion introduced in power amplifiers because of the different factors like no linearity in the output characteristics, then uh, frequency distortion because of the coupling capacitors and parasitic capacitances, and phase distortion because of the oh, frequency dependence of the phase of the transfer function or gain of the amplifier. So that finishes your type of distortions in the power amplifiers. In next video, I will start with the class A amplifier. So wait for my next video. Thank you very much for watching the video.